What's up guys? Welcome back to A Trucker's Life. I'm Jorge Navarro. If you're new to the channel, welcome to the channel. If you've already been subscribed, welcome back. And this will be our last Salvadorian vlog. And right now we are at the property of one of my uncles that has a lot of, a lot of land, a lot of cattle. He actually owns about 300 head of cattle, which is they're about $400 or so a piece. So you can do the math but they live very, very modest. It's a modest little house. They don't show anything off and they don't dress fancy. They don't drive fancy cars. That's just their way of life. But they own hundreds and hundreds of acres of land on both El Salvadorian and Guatemala side. He keeps half the cattle over there. The other half, he keeps it here. And that's what he does for a living. And he also does something that some of you might not agree with so much, but the way that he goes by doing it is pretty amazing. So he, what he does is he loans money to people that want to take the risk to go to the United States. And he sits and consults them for a while before he gives them this money because they have to put their land up or their property up for the money that he's borrowed, that he's lending them or that they are borrowing. And he consults them, he talks to them, tells them, make sure that they're, that they know what they're doing. Um, why leave? You're already here in this country. You can make whatever you can out of it. He did it himself and that they could do it too, to try not to, to try to figure out a reason to not leave. But if they still decide they want to leave and take the hard journey, up to the United States, he will loan them the money against their property. They don't pay it back, he keeps the property. That's how he owns, that's not the only way he owns a lot of this property, but that is one of the ways that he owns a lot of property. But most of it is owned more so because of his cattle business. So right now we're headed up to a little lake, a little pond. In today's vlog, I wanna to talk to you guys more about the things that I've observed while being here in El Salvador. The negatives and the positives. So observation number one that I have of El Salvador is its people, our people are amazing. They're always helpful, always trying to help each other. From what I've seen, everybody's extremely nice. Number two, the scenery. As you guys have seen throughout these videos that I've made here in El Salvador, we have so many beautiful things to see, so many beautiful things to do, and we only scratched the surface of things to do in such a small country, which is what surprises me. Such a little country, smaller than the size of Louisiana, has so many things to do and so many places to go see that is just amazing and hopefully we will be back again and we will be seeing more things maybe in six months maybe in a year but really my goal would be just to come back and live here in my motherland So these are all his cattle. This is my cousin. He's an adopted child. My, my uncle and aunt couldn't have any kids, so they adopted this young man from little. And he's uh, grown up out here. This is uh, what he, he will ultimately own all of this that we're seeing right now and a lot more once uh, his parents pass. But, he says it's a lot of hard work, and uh, but he loves it. He loves being out here. And my son wanted to come see a horse. So that's what we're trying to do here. The third thing is that the country feels extremely 
safe. Unlike in the past that I've been here, the last time I was here was 14, about 14 years ago. You had to really be careful where you would go. You still have to be careful where you go, just like any other major city. But it's uh, a lot, feels a lot safer, a lot more taken care of. The gang problem has pretty much diminished quite a bit. Not gonna say it doesn't exist because it's still here, but just like any other major city in the States, the problem is there as well. But the country is extremely, extremely safer than the last time I was here 14 years ago. Just feel like you can go pretty much anywhere as long as you don't go into places that of course the bad things will exist in the ghetto part areas of the major cities. All right, guys, and the last and final observation that I'm going to talk to you guys about is the administration of President Naib Bukele. Some, very few people think that it is a dictatorship in the making, but a lot of other people love the way he is handling everything here in this country. He is a young president in his mid 40s, if I'm not mistaken. And he has those young and fresh mentalities of certain things that are not stuck in older thoughts like our presidents in the United States. Our presidents in the United States are usually older men and they are stuck in their ways and they don't accept anybody's opinion on anything as it doesn't matter where you go. If you're Republican or Democrat, as you guys know, it's always older presidents. The presidency here is more of a progressive uh, party, more progressive than anything else. All right, guys, with that being said, let's talk about the negatives that are still going on here. The biggest problem in this country and the reason that a lot of people are, are fleeing this particular country is not because of violence anymore. At one point in time, my parents migrated to the United States because of a war, a civil war that we had back in the uh, early 80s, late 70s, early 80s. And that's the reason we went to the United States. That's how we migrated, just like everybody you see going up there now, same way we went up there, illegally. Now, the reason that everybody's leaving here now is because, guys, you have to understand, it is extremely expensive to live here. Very expensive. Even for us that come to visit, it's a lot more expensive than it used to be. Reason being is that the U.S. dollar is their currency here, and that is that is not a great thing. Why, you might ask? Because when the state no longer has its own currency, things are not valued with that currency. For example, when we used to come to El Salvador, let me squeeze through here. When we used to come to El Salvador, we used to get, I think it was like 14 pesos for $1. So that $1 would go a very long way. Now, it doesn't go that far anymore because of that reason, because they have the dollar. This administration here did not bring the dollar in. It was quite a few administrations ago. That is their currency here. There is no local currency. It's all the dollar. So whatever used to cost one colon back in the days, now with one colon, it was basically like 20 cents or something like that. Not even, 10 cents. I mean, and uh, you got me a fruit here. <laughs> Just growing everywhere. But anyways, and the, uh, the thing about the dollar, I mean, the thing about that was that 
now that the dollar came in, whatever cost 10 cents back then, which is the Colon, now actually costs a dollar, like an American dollar. It's the American dollar. So everything just shot up in prices. And it's hard to sustain a family that way. Food is expensive. A McDonald's meal is about for a Happy Meal and a one adult meal together is about $14. $14, yes, doesn't sound like a lot for us in America, but it is because they only make about $250 every two weeks here. So you can't be eating at McDonald's all the time. Definitely cannot happen. Another thing, cost of fuel. Fuel here, gasoline, is $3.30. $3.30 a gallon. I don't think in Houston it's that expensive right now, or it might be around that price. But we make quite a bit more money. That's why it's the explode the the ex just explosion of motorcycles a lot of motorcycles out here now because that's the only way they can go far with a little bit of money so food gasoline and now home necessities is very expensive as well too diapers for kids fourteen dollars a pack of diapers for a country that only makes 250 dollars every two weeks and that is a well-paid job normal everyday job mcdonald's employee probably makes about $125 every two weeks here. You see what the problem is here? That the money is, that everything is so expensive, but yet they're not making the money. Now, like I said, this government is changing a lot of things and they had just vowed to change and raise the minimum wage here by quite a bit. Plus he's gonna give now this is not etched in stone, but this is what has been rumored and what he's talked about, that they will be giving $30 of Bitcoin to everybody that has a bank account, or I think to every Salvadorian. They will be getting $30 of Bitcoin. Whether you use it immediately or you hold on to it, that's a different story. The best thing to do is hold on to it because Bitcoin, all it's doing is shooting up in price. So, cost of cars here is very expensive an old raggedy car I'm not saying our car is extremely raggedy but it's not anything super nice and this vehicle that we have is old 2003 i think um honda crv selling for over 10 grand here it's not going to be selling for that in the u.s well maybe right now because of the chip problem but on a normal year it's like a three thousand dollar vehicle so all these things make people and give people the decision to leave and this is where we circle back to my uncle and but he also talks to them like i said and tells them hey come on y'all could figure it out you don't have to leave this country there's things that you can do which there is but it's very 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 difficult i have a cousin that you saw probably in the first video that unfortunately got deported back to the united back to el salvador after he was raised in the u.s and he's having to adapt to this life, which is quite a bit from different from the life that he used to have. The reason that I always try to help him out so much is because he helped me in my time of need and I can't preach help anybody needs help if I don't do it myself. So that's something that I tried to do and I spent two days with him. I brought him some clothes, some shoes. He didn't ask for it, but from my heart, I brought it for him to take care of him because I remember when he took care of me. So those are the things, guys, those are the few things that are good about this country and the few things that are bad about this country. But if you wonder why people are leaving or fleeing El Salvador, it's because the cost of living is so expensive. Everything is so expensive, they just can't afford it. Does anybody want to leave their country, where they're from, their roots, and doesn't want to deal with racism at all? No, nobody wants to do that, but they have no choice. And some may say, well, get a visa. Why don't you get a visa and come legally? Poor people are not allowed visas here in this country. Well, the United States are the ones who give the visa. So poor people are not given visas. I know because 
I deal with, I mean, I, I talk to people and I have family that have tried to get them. So unless you own lots of property, unless you have, you're well-educated, you are not allowed to get a visa. If you're very poor, the people that clean your hotel rooms, the people that do your yards, they will never get a visa, ever. Just because they don't own property and they're not educated. So they, guys, it's one thing you have to understand. Like I said a little while ago, these people don't wanna leave their country. Why would you wanna leave something that you know? A little paradise here, so beautiful. Everything grows. There's fruits that literally he just picked up off the ground that we've, you guys have seen that I, fruits and vegetables that just grow everywhere. Why would anybody wanna leave that if they lived good enough where they could just sustain themselves and stay here? Nobody wants to leave that, guys. But you have to do what you have to do for your kids and for your family. And that was a choice that my parents made. They had to uh, just get up and leave everything they knew and everything they had here and go to the United States. So just a little bit of story, guys, a little bit. This is not political at all, not one bit. But I kind of do want you guys to understand the struggle that people have to deal with to be able to come or go to the United States. And like I said, deal with people, treating them bad, not paying them enough money. You guys think they pay taxes. They, they don't pay any taxes at all. I mean, they don't get any taxes back. They pay a lot of taxes because when they buy stuff, every time they purchase something, they're paying for the tax. They don't get income tax like we do. So all that free money that the United States is making off of these people, that's why, guys, everybody says they want to get rid of illegal illegals. It's just a show. They don't want to get rid of them because... They pay for a lot of the things that we have. A lot of our programs are getting paid by them. I know some of you guys might not like what I'm saying. And I understand that. But a lot of these people, nobody's able to do, nobody does is able to do taxes if you don't, if you're not legally in the US. Nobody in the US that is illegal can vote. Heck, I am a resident of the United States and I can't even vote. You have to be an American citizen. So I don't know. Those are things that kind of give me, get me a little upset because they say these things and uh, they're not true. But you guys can be the judges yourself. You can believe whatever you want to believe. You're totally fine. That's why you live in the U.S. You have the freedom to believe and vote for whoever you want to. But from the middle of the jungle here, in El Salvador we are walking back to the car getting ready because we have to go home to our house here get our stuff ready and we got to be ready to go back to the United States back to our new home and our real home that's where that's where we have our that's where we have everything guys that's where my heart is as much as I love this country here my heart is in the United States because that's all I know with that being said, guys, the next vlog will be from the United States back, hopefully working back in hot chocolate and making money to make plans to come back here, show you guys a little more of my country and explore a little bit more. With that being said, guys, thank you guys again for joining me one more time, one last time here in El Salvador for now. Don't forget to be kind to one another, help anybody needs help, anybody contemplating suicide, 1-800-273-8255. Military men and women worldwide, thank you for your service. See you guys on the next video. We out. Peace. We're out of here.